Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is Ian with Out of This World Reader, and today's video is going to be my wrap-up. What month did we just finish? It was uh, April, April. My April wrap-up. School has just fried my brain, but that's going to be on the agenda today. Overall, I'm really happy with this month. I mean, school kind of dipped down a little bit with the reading. I wasn't reading so much for class, so I was able to kind of dive into more books that I actually kind of wanted to read. So I kind of got to more books. I also got to a couple more audio books than I usually do. And just overall, the books that I got to this month were some of the best. I found several new fa favorites, new favorite characters. Just like this has been probably one of the best months I've had this year in just reading in general. It's just been a really good time. And I hope that that carries on for the rest of the year. I've got to do stats, but I feel like the average rating for this month was pretty high. So I'm just going to quit blabbing and just get right into these books. So I started this book at the end of March and it kind of carried over into April. And that was The Throne of Fire, which is the second book in this Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan. I ended up giving this 4.5 stars and I feel like this series in general is just a hidden gem compared to the other kind of Rick Riordan series that he's produced like the Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus. You always hear about those but I haven't really heard much about this and that kind of makes me sad a little bit because these are some of the best books I've read in middle grade and it's just because of the humor and the banter between the characters that you kind of encounter in the first book. This one you're introduced to quite a bit more characters and you get expanded into the Brooklyn house. But I'll kind of just explain a little bit of the background. This is following, in the first one, Sadie and Kate, Sadie and Carter are basically thrown into the world of Egyptian mythology after their father kind of has a accident trying to bring back somewhat of their I can't, I can't really go into much of like what they're trying to bring back but he essentially is trying to get some powers out of this artifact and ends up blowing up and then from there they're just on the run from just other magicians and they have to kind of save the world and at the end of the first one you're kind of left with what is next and then that kind of takes kind of place in this one you're set into a new kind of predicament the characters are faced with a new adversary and it just kind of expanded a lot more especially kind of in the red pyramid after the ending it wasn't much of a cliffhanger and I wasn't as kind of like I enjoyed it but I wasn't as excited to kind of get into it I guess because it wasn't that much of like on my edge like at the end like it was a good battle scene but then like after the end like I was kind of like questionable as to where it would go but in this one it really picked back up it's funny like comparing this to kind of other Rick Riordan books the magic system the magic system in this one is just the best it brought back the nostalgia of my days when I was playing wizard 101 I don't know if anybody else played that but I absolutely love that game and I was always grinding that when I was a little kid and it was similar in that because you kind of are using wands and spells and just like you're crafting them in the air kind of like in the game and it's very similar to Harry Potter which is another book I started this month and they were kind of comparable in that some ways but I just love the magic system and how it played how you kind of summon beasts to fight for you it was just like it brought back those happy memories of me playing Wizard 101 and I honestly kind of want to see if that game is still around. I don't know. Like I always loved playing it so maybe I can check it out but let me know like if you ever played it because I don't know if that was a very popular game. I felt like it was a popular game but I haven't heard of any anything nowadays. But again it just expanded more on just the Egyptian world that Sadie and Carter are kind of thrown into with this mythology you get more of the Brooklyn house and that is that is a top-notch house like if I could live anywhere it would be in Brooklyn house it's like a mix of like Hogwarts and kind of Camp Half-Blood essentially because it takes in other kids and I just love that aspect about it and then just 
there was including like banter between the different characters and the other side characters that kind of pop up and the humor throughout like just the middle grade humor i've said that about kind of rick Ryden's books but it's it makes you giggle even though like you're an adult like i feel like anybody will find themselves kind of laughing throughout these books so i might as well just continue on with the final book in the series which was The Serpent's Shadow by Rick Riordan, which I gave 4.5 stars as well. I really want to do a series wrap-up on this because I enjoyed it that much. So if you'd like to see that, please let me know because I just feel like these are not talked about and they should be. So that's probably why I'll just end up doing it anyway. But I just love this series in general. Like, it's one of my favorite middle grades. Like, comparing, like, I feel like it's on... It was close to the level of Percy Jackson. I still like those other ones. But it just continued to expand, like on, on from the Throne of Fire. Like you're left on a like a really big cliffhanger after the Throne of Fire, compared to like the Red Pyramid, and then right in the Serpent Shadow, it just picks off and it doesn't let up. And at the end, like I don't really, I'm not gonna go into any spoilers, but the last like hundred pages or so are just action packed and on the edge of your seat, and that just made it so much more enjoyable. Like it was, like. Throughout the whole, like, in, throughout the whole Serpent Shadow, like, it was just, like, a fun time throughout. Like, usually, kind of books that I've encountered, they'll kind of go up and down and a little bit. But this one, it seemed to me, like, it just was continually rising and rising. And then at the end, it was just, like, the kind of, like, just action-packed, like I said, on the edge of your seat, thrilling. Just, I'm just lost at words of just how great this series has kind of left a mark on me. I picked this one up after reading the first Harry Potter book, and I was on a high after reading Harry Potter. I just was thrown into more magicians and magic in Harry Potter, and then that carried over into this, and it was just... I just flew through this book, and I think this one in general is my favorite out of the series. I'm sad to see it end, but it was just some of the best I've had, some of the best reading I've had in middle grade, and I'm looking forward to getting more into middle grade in general because I just feel like they're just very heartwarming and they they can inspire you even though you're an adult and I am somewhat I should be considered an adult now and I still feel inspired by this so if you haven't checked these out please check them out and then if you want to see that series wrap up please let me know because I would love to just blab more about these books we might as well just continue on with more magic and another book that involved that that I got to this month was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. And I gave this 4.5 stars as well. Like a lot, I'm just telling you, like this month was top notch in reading. I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I love this series so much. And I'm not just saying that because it's popular and everyone else loves it and loves them as well. But... I was worried in the beginning, like the first like 50 pages or so when I was explaining a little bit of Harry Potter's situation, I was kind of skeptical as to whether I would like it as much. But then when Hagrid showed up, those worries went away. And then we got to Diagon Alley and then I was just in love from then on. Just more magic and wizards. I will always love anything involving witches and wizards and magic. So I think that this has become one of my favorite series and I know I say that about everything but I just like this in general JK Rowling really kind of crafted this in a way that would if I would 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 have read this when I was really young like when my mind was just on everywhere it would have been the best time of my life I feel like but again I got those similar vibes of Wizard 101 and then I found some new favorite characters, Albus Dumbledore and Hagrid. They're some of the best characters I've ever encountered. Just like Hagrid just doesn't have like a bad bone in his body and he's just got like a heart of gold. And then Dumbledore is just like this hilarious kind of like old man that is just so full of wisdom. But just in his encounters with Harry and just the kind of other chapters that they kind of expand on him a little bit, like they were just the funny like he's just a funny old man and i love him for it but i think that i will breeze through this series i don't even know how many books there are but i think i got through this one in like a day or so and that's that's like i was going through especially this time when i was reading this like i had a bunch of papers due and i felt like i should just be reading that instead of reading writing those papers 
But I just breezed through that one, and I think that will carry on for the Chamber of Secrets and just the rest of the series in general. An audiobook that I finally finished this month. I think I started it a couple months ago, but I finally finished it, and that was A Promised Land by Barack Obama. I've been hearing a lot about this just book in general, so I thought I'd check out the audiobook because it's actually narrated by Barack Obama himself. And I wanted to learn more about his presidency because I was a youngin at the time that he took office and I wasn't aware of a lot of the things that he had to kind of go through and encounter on just everyday kind of like experiences just to learn more about just like his background and how he got into politics and what inspired him to make the choices he did and kind of into to get into politics and then just his presidency in, in general and the challenges he has to face. It was really inspiring to kind of like get his viewpoint on everything. So if you haven't checked it out, I'd recommend the audiobook because it is narrated by him and it is a thick book. So if you are kind of worried about that, just check out the audiobook. I feel like that would be the best way to kind of like dive into this. And what's crazy is that this was just part one. It covered basically just the first four years of his office, and I believe he's planning on coming out with the next four years of his office in the future. But I really want to kind of read Michelle Obama's Becoming book, because I've also heard great things about that. So maybe I'll check that out in the future. If you have any thoughts about that one, please let me know. One of the mystery thrillers that I got to this month was The Death of Miss Westaway by Ruth Ware, which I believe I gave three stars or 3.5 no i gave three i give it i give it 3.5 stars i think i i don't even know anymore i just my mind is just school has fried my mind but i gave that because i gave this one a try because i've had a complicated relationship i've i think i've mentioned this before on my channel but i have a complicated relationship with ruth Ware. like she, before i read this one she was two and two and my sister really liked this one so i thought i'd give it a try and I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but I will continue on with reading Ruth Ware's books. This one was the determiner of whether I would continue on with reading her books because those last two that I read were just not the best and I was worried that I would never read from her again, but it has redeemed our kind of relationship and I will be continuing on with the future. But this is following Hal as she kind of has a tough predicament with a loan shark and an opportunity kind of arises when a, she receives a letter in the mail to kind of go to this estate as she is a beneficiary, beneficiary ben, I, I, can't, I can't even say it, but she is a, she's in, come across some inheritance money or just some inheritance and she kind of has to debate whether she's going to go to this manor and kind of accept it because she doesn't know this family at all so she's kind of questioning as to whether she can pull this off and kind of take the money and pay off her loans but she does and she travels to this estate and she learns more about the family and her past and how her kind of mom played into it because her mom passed away in the past and she's taken over her business on the pier as a tarot reader and i absolutely loved how the kind of expanded on that a little bit in the beginning and a little bit throughout the story. I did a book chat on this, so be on the lookout for that soon, where I kind of dive more deep into kind of the background and my thoughts on that. But overall, I really like the setting that it takes place in. The house is very creepy, and it's got all these hallways that are just kind of... You don't know what's going on with the house, and it's very creepy. It gives you kind of like a haunted house feel, but I also loved like the plot in general, like it wasn't something I had experienced before, before, like traveling to take in an inheritance with a family that you have no idea, like that's something I haven't experienced with with um, kind of mystery thrillers, so it was fun to kind of experience that a little bit more, but like I said, it wasn't my favorite, but I will be continuing on with more Ruth Ware books in the future. I think the only one I haven't read is The Lion Game, so if you have any thoughts on that, please let me know. I think my favorite book this month was Flamefall, which is the second book in the Aurelian Cycle by Rosaria Munda. And I gave this five stars. Like, that's how good it was. If you haven't heard me talk about this series on in the kind of like my past videos, I absolutely love this series in general. Like, it's got dragons, and it kind of is centered around the Russian Revolution, like the events of the Ruf Russian Revolution and it's kind of included 
kind of the works of the Odyssey and just Homer and all those other classical works and it just Rosario Munda kind of just crafted together this just action-packed dragon-filled fantasy YA fantasy story but in the first one Fireborn you're following two different perspectives Annie and Lee one of them being kind of like the Anastasia of the Russian Revolution and his family was brutally murdered and then Annie is kind of on the other side of the kind of the whatchamacallit the Lee's family they were kind of like in power and they kind of were cruel to everyone else and Annie was on the other side of that and then basically they find themselves together in an orphanage and then they go to this dragon academy through a test because this is basically kind of like a caste system like you have to take a test and then basically but based on your results you are kind of thrown into different kind of jobs and they were because of their test results they were sent to the dragon academy and then they just create these bonds throughout but after that, once they arrive at the Dragon Academy, they're competing to become the first rider of Calypolis. And you kind of journey with them throughout the kind of training and the just the battles. And then there is something else going on. Some of... I don't, I don't want to go into spoilers about it, but there's just something else going on in the kind of background that's kind of hinting at something bigger at play. And it really, like, at the end of Fireborn, the cliffhanger was just, like, I couldn't stand it because the uh, second book, Flamefall, hadn't come out. So I had to wait, and I couldn't wait. But in this one, it just picked off right from the start, and it was just action-packed throughout. You got more drama and just more kind of just battle scenes. Like, there's some of the best aerial battle scenes with dragons I've had. But also in this one, we were introduced to another perspective. Whereas in the first one, it was just Annie and Lee. This one follows a new perspective, Griff. And you kind of still get more of just Annie and Lee because they are facing new challenges throughout this one. And you're really, like, throughout this one, you're just questioning their safety. And I was worried for them throughout, but I was just... I can't, I'm lost in words at just the ending. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I loved it. But I can't wait until like a year until the next book comes out because it's just like left me with so many questions and I can't wait to just dive into this final book in the trilogy. So if you read this, I want to get your thoughts on it. Please let me know down below what you kind of thought and what your thoughts about this on the series in general. Another audiobook that I got to this month was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, which I gave four stars. Eric Larson was an author that I really wanted to get into because he really focuses on a different history topics that really kind of interest me. And this one I had no prior knowledge on, like the World's Fair and the Chicago's World's Fair. They like, they really interested me, but I heard nothing about them. And the World's Fair, they like, once I kind of dived into kind of his audiobook and him explaining him, they are really like a place of whimsy and just adventure. Like you had all kinds of famous people and architects and just artwork and just throw it all together. You almost got like this Tomorrowland version of just everything that like could inspire you. It's just crazy that I haven't really heard much about this because we have a lot of things today because of these World's Fair. And I really wish I could have went to them because it would just been like a blast. It's like a Disneyland of the past, basically. But it isn't just the boring stuff of the kind of World's Fair. Like it gives you these kind of like Sherlock Holmes kind of it like takes on H.H. H. Holmes, the famous murderer of the Chicago World's Fair, who was a very creepy man. And he killed several, murdered several people throughout the Chicago World Fair. And it kind of jumped between the building of the World Fair and just the background of his him, Holmes, and then his murders. And they were brutal. And it just made it more enjoyable. That's why I gave it four stars is because I would learn a bit and then get like this little bit of Sherlock Holmes kind of experience with Holmes. <laughs> so if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. Another fantasy book that I got to this month was The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, which I gave four stars. I can't believe it took me this long to finally get to this book. I've been putting it on TBRs for quite some time now, but I finally picked it up and I liked it. It was something different 
Like, I've, I haven't heard much about this one, but I've heard quite a bit about the author, N.K. Jemison. I've heard she's produced a lot of great books that I really want to get to in the future. Like, going in, I thought it was going to be more fantasy, but it, it turned out to be more sci-fi. And it was kind of like a mix of, like, Stranger Things and just, yeah, just Stranger Things. Like, the evil being that's in this is, like, similar to the Mind Flayer. But the fact that it was kind of comparable to that, like, it was very spooky as a kind of, she used the descriptions in her writing to, descriptive writing that she uses to kind of just portray this evil being, and it made it creepy. So I'm just going to read you kind of like the little blurb. It says, five New Yorkers must come together in order to defend their city. Every city has a soul. Some are as ancient as myths and others as, are as new and destructive as children. New York City, she's got five. But every city also has a dark side. A roiling, ancient evil stirs beneath the earth, threatening to destroy the city and her five protectors unless they can all come together and stop it once for all. But just going in, like, the thought that the, every city had a th soul kind of made me, like, question and wonder, like, as to what happened to all those other great cities that kind of fell. But... I will really go more in depth with this on that book chat that I hope to be coming out, but I absolutely love this new series, and I will be continuing on with the next book when it comes out. But those are all the books I got to this month. It was just overall a really good time for me in reading, and I can't wait to just keep reading more books. If you kind of have any thoughts on any of these books I've got to this month, please let me know down in the comments below. Let me know your plans for the month of May, like what books are you planning on getting to, and just like what was your favorite book of this month. If you want to connect with me on social media, I'll make sure to leave those down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss out on another adventure. And as Ellie always says, adventure is out there. So I'll catch you next time. Bye.